Well, aloha. I feel kind of Hawaiian today, so I thought I'd, I'd be like this. So Hawaiian, Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. And uh, I've got all my notes here, and I'm, I'm now about to do some of the things that I was supposed to do a, few, a little while back. I want to start by thanking you all for all your wonderful message from Father's Day. Obviously, I didn't spend it at home with my children because I, I was traveling f back from Europe, but I, all your messages that I read uh, did make me smile and I felt happy about that. And um, finally I got home and uh, I, I sat beside my, my, lovely, my lovely wife who incidentally uh, made me the father that I am today, you know, she gave me us our children and uh, and four wonderful kids and uh, unfortunately they went with me at that particular time out they they were all scattered around the world but um, so today I'm making up for my Tuesday music and I have I've, I've dropped uh, I've dropped a couple of things uh, on on my over here in my evil Knievel helmet there are some notes and they're from people that have written in and asked me a few questions. So, and the reason for the evil Knievel is because it brings back kind of few memories, you know, because he was such a wonderful man and we were, we were great friends and uh, he made this gift to me because I loved riding motorcycles. I started my, my motorcycle riding when I was in the service in the British Army and I was a dispatch rider and we were, I used to lead convoys and things like that. And um, I enjoyed my time uh, riding in the Army. And when I got home, uh, I didn't have a motorcycle and I used to ride behind my, my lovely wife on her scooter and uh, I would hold on to her and instead of her holding on to me, I was holding on to her. She was a good rider, believe me. And uh, But quite recently I've taken up, uh, well not recently, I've been taking, I've been riding Harleys and and, uh, and Evo, and Evo gave me this wonderful gift and I've treasured it ever since. It's got my name on it and his signature. Uh, uh, and I do treasure it very much. And that's my story about my Harley and the helmet and the reason for putting the notes in there. Now, first question. Okay, it's from Marissa Muro. And it says, Hi Engelbert Humperdinck, I've been listening to your CDs a lot and I'm wondering if you could give me a little history of the song you sang many times so beautifully, How I Love You. Well, uh, she said she couldn't get over how beautiful the lyrics are and, and it's a, such a unique song. And um, I want to tell you, uh, Marissa, it's one of my favorites in my, in my, I've ever recorded. And it was number one in Lebanon for a whole year. It was like an anthem over there, you know, and every, everybody knows that. And when I go to Southeast Asia, I, I, I sing that, I always sing that song because it's, it seems to bring the house down. And I dearly love doing it, especially underneath the stars. And I thank you for the for the question. It's a beautiful song. It has great, very touching lyrics, I, and I and I, I certainly enjoy singing them. And um, well, then I'm going to go and thank you, Mar thank you, Marissa, for that question. Um, now then, question number two, Sandra Hodges. Hi, Engelbert Humperdinck. That's me. Uh, thank you for inviting us to ask questions. Oh, where's the second part of this? Oh, here it is. Okay, excuse me. Uh, here it is, second one. What about, uh, one says, say, what, I, when, uh, about, okay. Uh, I'm uh, inviting us to ask questions about what to talk about on Tuesday. I can't help but ask this question. What has helped you to overcome difficult challenges in your life and keep going, enabling you to sail through these difficult challenges that life throws at you? So don't you have to, uh, you don't have to answer, but somehow you always enlighten my heart with your kind words. Take care. Uh, and she's Sandrita? Sandrita, that sounds great. Well, I want to tell you the way I overcome the, some of the difficulties in my life, you know, is, and, uh, and troubling moments is the fact that I, I, um, I write po poetry. And when I, when I read the poetry back, it's like a release valve for me. And I find it most, oops, here we go. Can you hold that for me, please? Thank you. And I find it most rewarding to write poems and, and, and get these, uh, open up the, the valves and, and release things from my heart and, and from my head. And this is one I want to, I want to read for you. Um, uh, and this is to, uh, yeah, this, what's her name? Uh, oh yeah, it's uh, Sandra. 
Okay, Sandra, this is it. This is a poem I wrote, and this is what helped me uh, to, to calm down, release valves, uh, type of thing. At times I dream I'm on the ocean, no destination in view, floating like a timber torn away from its earthy root. The water rocks me gently as I try to sleep, the pitter-patter of a ripple softly touching my cheeks. Gazing at the sky above, my mind adrift in silent wonder, or on a rolling veil of tears, or so it seems, for who knows what lies under. As I toss and tumble through the waves, I ask God to pave the way, where there is a calm, and stop the hatred, fighting, and the painful harm. I pray that peace behold the land I bed, and gently cradle me, cradle me home safely, sinless, and to my precious love, who stays inside my heart and ever constant in my head. That's one, okay? That's for you, uh, I, I, and, and it answers your question. And the next question is, uh, I, I think I have it on there, the next question, it comes, no, we, no, God, we've got Sandra, and now the next one comes from Madge, okay? Madge George is the name. Uh, I'd like to know what you have done if you had not become such a super entertainer. Thank you for the compliment. Still looking fabulous at 53. Yes, now I like you even better, Madge. Can't wait to see you at the MGM. Uh, oh, when is that? I wonder. Was at the MGM? I suppose that's along the way. Um, she she knows when. You know where when it is. Okay. Um, and the question is. Let me see if it's here. I'm all mixed up. <laughs> uh, you see it? Oh yes, it's Northfield, Ohio in June. That's, I'm leaving tomorrow for that. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So better pack your clothes and get packing. Um, uh, I, I'm all packed and ready to go, so don't worry about that. Now the question you asked me, what would I do if I wasn't in showbiz? Well, uh, I really don't know. Uh, I, you know, show business has been buried in my heart all my life, ever since I was a little boy and I was playing the saxophone and learning my music, etc. But if I didn't make it in the industry, I really don't know how I would have felt or be feeling it. But um, my second choice, I probably, I love taking care of people like, for instance, you know, I enjoy medicine, I enjoy uh, learning, um, I respect doctors so much because of their difficult task and, and healing people. And uh, I would have got interested, in, uh, I try to get interested in that, I suppose, but if not, I would have loved to have been in the police force. You see, I have a great deal of respect for them. Uh, you know, these, it's a tough job they do, and I, uh, and I may have sung at a policeman's ball uh, once or twice in my life, and, and it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful time. So that answers that question. Now, question number four. This comes from Mags McMichael. Hi, Engelbert. Would, could you tell me about how you keep Pat included in the things you do while you are home? Do you let your beautiful wife know when you are leaving to go on the road, or do you just split and go away? But no, I don't. I don't just go away, uh, Mags. I, I, uh, in the early days. I used to say to her, do because of her condition, I used to say, darling, I'm gonna go and do some shopping. But you know, my my children used to get quite upset with me because she obviously, you know, I, I can't go shopping for days. But uh, so I decided once she was getting a little better and, and progressed in her, in her healing, uh, thank God, uh, that I would speak the truth and tell her that I'm going to work. I'm, I'm, I'm going out to do the job that I, I love doing. And uh, she used to love watching my show, so she, she'll understand when the time comes, she'll understand that this is the answer I am giving you of that question. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, leaving her is quite, quite an ordeal because it, it's, it, it's a sad part of my life, although I have to do it, you know, and I find it necessary. I, I give her a kiss and I tell her, you know, I'll be back soon. I'm going to do my job and I'll be back soon, okay? And she doesn't quite answer me, but I can see in her eyes that she totally understands. And, and one day, uh, I'm sure that uh, when she reflects on what has been happening uh, in her life, uh, she will understand uh, 
and remember some of these moments that I'm talking about right now. I think I have answered that question, my dear, and uh, I don't know what, what the, the next question is, but all I can say is that I think, uh, let me see, look in here and see what's in here. Let me see what this is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, that was a very important question that you, you handed me there, man. It was a really, really important question. I loved it. And I needed to answer that question. Uh, uh, I've told you about the hat, I've told you about this, I've told you about everything. I'll, and keep the questions, keep the, you know, the questions coming because I find this interesting, although I'm, I, at the moment, I'm a little all mixed up. But I'll get this sorted and it'll become, it'll become routine and it will become more professional on my next approach on Tuesday, Tuesday next week.